So, magandang umaga sa inyo, mayong buntag. Uh, let me just start my message by asking you, may pinagkaiba ba ang langit at lupa? Langit na sa iba ba? Hindi ko pala sa lupa. Oo. Sa langit, doon nakatira si God. Sa lupa, sino nakatira? Tayo. Sa langit, may naghihirap o wala? Wala. Sa lupa, marami. Sa langit, may maguguto mo wala? I remember when Daniel was small, sabi niya, Papa, is there food in heaven? Kasi pag walang food, I don't want to go to heaven. <laughs> when he was small. <laughs> diba sa langit, walang nagugutom. Sa lupa, kung hindi ka kakayod, wala kang makakain. So if there are differences ng langit at lupa, ang tanong ko na next is, ano namang pinagkapareho ng langit at lupa? Meron ba? What's the same about them? In the Bible, I found two similarities. And one is found in Psalm chapter 89, verse 11. And it says, The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The world and all it contains. You have founded them. So Bible tells us that heaven and earth belongs to the Lord. And then if you go to John chapter 3, verse 35, sabi ni Jesus, The Father loves the Son and has given all things into His hands. Both heaven and earth belong to God and He has given Jesus the authority to rule over them. If these are true, then bakit in earth they're suffering, in heaven, Wala. Both of them belong to the Lord. If the both of them belong to the Lord, then bakit sa langit walang suffering, on earth madami? Sabi nga ni Mim, dito madami. And why would Paul say in Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, Set your minds on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. Because of this statement, many Christians believe that they should free themselves from the concerns of this world and focus their attention on trying to get to heaven. You know, as I sometimes scan sa YouTube, there are people who really nabundok literally to set themselves free from the concerns of the world. In fact, many have sold their land. Diba? They literally obeyed what Jesus said in, in Luke chapter 18, by selling their land, giving it to the poor, hoping that this would be their ticket to eternal life. Some have abandoned their jobs and businesses kasi naniniwala sila, these are part of the evil things of the world. Diba, I shared with you this story about the pastor who told me when I, he heard that I will marry the Bible into my business, sabi niya, it cannot be done. Because magkaiba sila. Business is of the world, and then iba ang sa Lord. So these people, to get by, they decide to work in the church and give their lives to mission. Sabihin nila, maski maliit ang kita doon, never mind. My rewards in heaven will be great naman. You know, sana totoo, no? That those who, who sold their land, gave up their business in order to serve the Lord, sana totoo that their rewards will be great. Kasi pag hindi, sayang naman yung suffering nila. And they did that only because, sabi ni Paul, set your minds on the things above, not on the things on earth. You know, today, when you listen to the gospel, the good news, ano sasabihin sa'yo? That you will go to heaven when you die if you accept Jesus Christ. Tama ba? Sabi nila, when we get to heaven, God will take away all our pain and suffering. Ako, no, I always ask, eh, paano naman tayo habang sa lupa? What kind of life will we have if we accept Jesus Christ? Ang sagot ng karamihan, dito magtiis ka muna. Total, your life here on earth is very short compared to 
eternity. You may suffer for 20 to 30 years, pero think about what you will gain. Good news ba yan? Good news for eternity. But for the meantime, habang nagtitiis ako, naghihintay, hindi yan good news. Kasi some people fall into sin because of the pain they have here on earth. And nangyayari na yan. There are pastors who burn out sa galit nila, gumawa sila ng kasalanan because grabe ang pagtitiis nila. There are many cases of missionaries stealing money from the church because grabe ang pagtitiis. Ito ba ang ibig sabihin ni Paul when he said, Set your minds on the things above, not on the things on earth. That we should deprive ourselves of many things on earth because meron naman tayong pupuntahan sa langit. When I saw this verse, it bothered me. Then I asked myself, ano ba tagi ibig sabihin ni Paul? Because nga, I have always believed there is nothing in the Bible that was written to hurt us. And yet this idea hurts many people. To understand what Paul was teaching, ang ginawa ko, I checked the original word used for set your mind. Ang Greek word, proneo, which means to be concerned, to make it your purpose, and to make it your attitude. So, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, Paul was saying, make it your attitude or your purpose to be concerned about the things above, not on the things on earth. What things na sinasabi ni Paul? Ano tong things na we should be concerned above and not on earth? Tell me. Ano ba concern nyo on earth? Ano mga concern nyo? Ano yung mga pinag-iisipan nyo on earth? Nabukasan ng anak nyo. Pagkain na araw. Importante ba yung pagkain? Oh, siyempre, no? Mungiwang tana. <laughs> <laughs> Pagkain, ano pa? Yung health, yung bahay, yung damit na susuotin nyo. Today, sa pandemic, many people are worried about travel. Kailan nila kaya ako makakabiyahe, mabibili yung gusto ko. Now, question. Do you sin when you worry about these things? Diba some people believe you sin, kaya nga they give it up eh. And they quote what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Pag sinabi ba ni God na do not worry about food, shelter, or clothing, does it mean na we sin when we are concerned about them? Oh, so why do you give them up? Pero meron akong dalawang words na ginamit which I wish you would take note. I talk about being concerned and being worried. Magkapareho ba sila? When you are concerned about something and you are worried about something, magkapareho ba sila? To be concerned and to be worried, both means you are anxious. Pero malaki ang pinagkaibin nila. When I check the meaning in the dictionary, to be concerned means to be in distress, enough to care. Take note of that, ha? To be concerned means to feel distress enough to care. And because you care, ano gagawin mo? You'll do something about it. To be worried, ano ibig sabihin nun? You are anxious until you feel miserable. Bakit hindi mo nakuha? Parang ganun. Bakit hindi mo nakuha? Ang tanong, bakit hindi mo nakuha? Ang tanong ko, ano ginawa mo para makuha? When you are worried, you think about something until you are miserable, pero wala kang ginawa. Yung concern, you are distressed enough to do something about it. To worry means, nag-isip mo lang, beto beto wala akong pagkain, beto wala, wala ka namang ginawa. How does this explain Colossians chapter 3, verse 2? Sabi niya, set your mind on things above and not things that are on earth. 
you know, when I was trying to understand this, tayo sa Similia and sa Moraya, whenever I talk to people about business and farming, na notice ko ang parati lang pinag ang concern yung end result. Gano kalaki yung harvest, ilang bunga lalabas, magkano kikitain ko diyan, magkano pera ang magkakaroon ako, immediately they compute ano yung dulo. Is it wrong to think about harvest and profit and money? Is it wrong to be concerned about that? Hindi naman siguro, di ba? Pero ang tanong, if you spend your days worrying about harvest and profit, dadami ba yung harvest mo at kita mo? Hindi, di ba? Kasi the issue is, anong ginawa mo para dumami siya? In farming, I would say, if you want your plant to become fruitful, do not focus on the fruit. Instead, focus your energy on growing a healthy plant. Tapos in business naman, we would say, If you want your business to become profitable, do not focus on the profit. Instead, focus your energy on growing a healthy organization. Bible is not telling us not to be concerned about the things we need on earth. But if we worry about them and do not do anything, alam mo, hindi natin siya makukuha. Para rin sa buhay, di ba? If you always worry about food, the food that you will eat, however, you did not do anything about it, problema, no question. Ano ang nangyayari sa tao na who worried about food pero wala siyang ginawa? Ano, ano normally ginagawa niya after? Gutom na siya, pero hindi siya nagtrabaho. Mangawat. Mangawat sila, they start to sin because they worried about something na wala silang ginawa. Dapat, ang focus natin, ang worry natin, is kanong gagawin natin para magkaroon tayo ng pagkain. I believe ito ang sinasabi ni Paul when he said, set your mind on the things above. Because if you focus your attention on the things above, heaven will automatically satisfy the things we need here on earth. Ito ang sinasabi ni Jesus. Can you go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 26 to 29? Let me read verse 26. Sabi dyan, Look at the birds of the air that they do not sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more day? And who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you, not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. So sabi ni God sa atin, He can provide for all His creations, like the birds and the lilies. Sabi ni Jesus, if I can provide for them, why can't I not provide for you? Now, I need you to listen to this. Huh? Very important. For God to provide for the birds, where should the birds focus their attention? Lalalim, no? Simple lang yung sagot. On being birds. Ano on being be, birds? Just be themselves. Just be themselves, meaning they should live out their purpose. What is the purpose of birds? To go from tree to tree, to look for insects. As they go from tree to tree, ano ang benefit nila sa ecosystem? They pollinate. They need to do that in order to pollinate the ecosystem that God created. For God to provide for the birds, the birds must act like birds. Ano mangyayari pag one day sabi ng ibon, I don't like to be a bird anymore. I don't like flying from one tree to another. Mas maraming pagkain sa lupa. Mas maraming nung tagapagkain sa lupa. Mas maraming microorganism sa lupa. One day sabi niya, ayoko na. I'd like to stay in the soil to get microorganism from the soil. Makakakain siya? Bakit? May iba kakain sa kanya. May iba sa kanya. They were not equipped. They were not equipped for that. Kaya nga sila nakakalipad 
kasi para siya dyan. For God to provide for the lilies, where should the lily focus their attention on? To being lilies. What does that mean? They should live out their purpose. Ano ba ang purpose ng lilies? Lilies are in the pond to eat the ways of other creatures para ma-maintain ang order ng pond. Do you like that? Eating the ways of other creatures? Pero God rewards them eh. Anong God rewards them? By cleaning the pond, God made them beautiful. Anong mangyayari when the lilies one day said, I don't like to be a lily anymore. I don't like to live in the pond. Gusto ko sa dagat, mas maraming pagkain doon. Will it survive? Bakit siya mamatay? He was not created for that. He was not designed for it. So God said He can provide for everything we need on earth. But He's telling us, focus your attention on who I want you to be. If you're still in Matthew chapter 6, look at verse 33. Sabi niya, we should set our mind on something. Where should we set our mind on? Sabi sa verse 33, but seek first His kingdom and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Kanina, at the start of the message, I told you that the Greek word for set your mind on is proneo, which means to be concerned or to make it your purpose. So if our concern on earth is food, shelter, and clothing, where does God want us to put our attention on? What is the purpose of man? Ang tanong, why did God create man? He created the birds to help pollinate, maintain balance. He created the lilies to clean the pond, maintain balance. Why did God create us? What is our purpose? You see that in Genesis 1.26. Verse 26 says, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Man was created to rule over, not to lord over, not to have dominion, not to do whatever he likes. I told you before that to rule over means taga-alaga ka. God created us to take care of the earth according to God's image and likeness. What does that mean? What does it mean to take care of the earth according to God's image and likeness? Ano ibig sabihin nun? Ang ibig sabihin ng to take care of the earth according to God's image and likeness is to do it according to His ways, which is right for Him. Di ba? Alagaan mo yan based sa tama para sa akin. Kaso lang, ang ginagawa ng tao, we insist on doing what is right for us. Oftentimes, contradicting what is right for God. What do I mean? Bakit maraming mahirap na tao? Bakit maharaming mahirap na Pilipino? Because they believe it is the obligation of the rich to provide for them. Did God say that? No. God told the rich, remember the poor. Pero para ang poor, hindi maging poor, ano dapat ang gawin ng poor? Magtrabaho. Kung magtatrabaho siya, will he need the rich to provide for him? No. Kasi gusto ng poor, someone provides for him. Hindi din naman yun ang paraan ni God. If only all the poor will work, kaso namimili ng trabaho. Gusto ko yung mataas kagad. Now, masama ba mag-desire ng mataas na sweldo? No. Pero paano tataas ang sweldo mo? Pag nagsipag ka, maski saan ka magsimula, tataas din yun. So some people would say, pag hindi mataas ang sweldo dyan, hindi na ako magtatrabaho. In fact, in fact I hear a lot of 
companies complaining today. Bagong graduate. Imbis na magtanong magkano ang sweldo, ang sabi ito gusto ko ang sweldo. Kasi yun ang sabi sa eskwela eh, huwag kang papayag na maganyan lang sweldo mo. Dapat ganito. Ano naman alam mo? So now, we insist on what is right for us. Not what is right according to the Lord. The Lord is telling us, take care of the earth according to my ways, which is right. Kaya sabi ng Matthew chapter 6, seek first his kingdom. What is his kingdom? Take care of the earth and my righteousness, which is saying, according to my ways. So, mabuti pa yung birds and lilies. Mas obedient sila. Because they live according to God's design. And that's the reason God provides for them. You see, I realize if we take care of the earth, the earth will take good care of us. But since we worry too much about the result and not on the process, we have destroyed the earth that was created to take care of us. I always complain sa mga tao ko, kawawa naman yung kitang lad, nakakalbo na, oh, kasi madami igurot. Nung pumunta kami sa lantapan, nung binisita sila Denise doon, pagpunta namin sa lantapan, mas kalbo ang lantapan. E many years ago, when I went to lantapan, mas forest ang lantapan kaysa sa upper kulaman. Ngayon, pagpunta mo, kalbo na. Because people are so worried about the things that they need, forgetting that we need to focus on the process to get it. In Colossians 3, 2, Paul said, we sh you should set your mind on things above, not on the things that are on earth. Kasi if we act on the concerns of the Lord, the things on earth will automatically follow. Di ba kasama dyan ng pag-ipon, pag-alaga ng pera, pero sabihin ninyo, eh sir do, wala naman akong farm. How do we apply this if I'm an ordinary employee, if I'm a student? Tayo, how do we apply this? Doon sa mga empleyado, they should work hard and protect the company they work for. Even if they feel the company is flawed. Lord, bet naman ako magsisipag daming problema ng kumpanya. Pero in Jeremiah 29.7, you don't have to go there because I mentioned this before, sabi ni God, seek the welfare of the city where I have placed you because its welfare will be your welfare. Ay nako, no? happy ako kay Pastor L, kan na May, kan na Ray, kan na Loloy because they're always concerned about the welfare of Moriah, the welfare of Similia. So ano nangyayari? You know, mas itama si June Ray, no? Maski konti lang sila, naalagaan nila ang S2. Because they were so concerned about the welfare of Similia, inaalagaan sila ngayon ni God. Na, not, not Similia, because Similia is nothing. Inaalagaan sila ni God. Para may sweldo si June Ray, binigyan ni God ng wanta na pechay ang Similia. Yeah. To make sure they will never be in need. Tapos, pag may sweldo tayo, empleyado tayo, may sweldo tayo, dapat anong gawin natin? Alagaan natin yung pera, iipon natin, we don't buy things na hindi necessary, di ba? So that our money will take good care of us in the future. If you are still a student, you study well. Do not study for grades, but instead you study to gain wisdom and abilities. Yung ibang estudyante nga, why do they study? For the diploma, so that they can ask a higher salary from the company that they will apply to. Diba? Dapat ang estudyante, when they study, they study to develop the abilities they will need so that they can buy bread in the future, provide for their clothing, and buy homes. If you are in business, serve your customers well. Because if happy sila, your customers will make sure na happy ka in the future. Alam mo ba na Paul was not the first person who said, set your mind on things above? This is something that God has been telling us in the Bible. Let, let me show you. Can you go to Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16? It says, Thus says the Lord, 
stand by the ways and see and ask for the ancient path, where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your soul. But what do people say? We will not walk in it. Diba hanggang ngayon, ang yun ang nangyari. I told you before that ancient doesn't mean old. Ancient means eternal. It is true before, it will be true today, it will be true in the future. Yeah. The God has been saying, I have set your path already. Yeah. Walk in it. But many people would say, ayoko. Diba? Ayaw nila magtrabaho, so they worry about their food. Kasi gutom na, magnanakaw na lang kung nagtrabaho lang sana. Di ba sabihin, eh, mas madali magnakaw. Well, totoo yun, pero mas mahirap naman sa kulungan. Mas mabuti na magtrabaho ka kaysa makulong ka. Have you seen yung kulungan ng Pilipino ngayon? Di ba para silang sardinas? Ayaw nila magtrabaho. They'd rather steal kasi mas madali. Pag nakulong sila, mas mahirap. Now, the heavens and the earth belong to the Lord. Both of these are under the authority of Jesus. Totoo, there will be no suffering in heaven. But hindi rin totoo na because we are still on earth, God cannot bless us with abundance. The reason people suffer is because we refuse to take the ancient path, the path that God has shown. Do you know that Israel should not have suffered at any stage in their history? Pero pagbasa natin na yung problema ng Israel, they should not have been exiled because they were destined to rule the world. What do I mean? Last verse natin, go to Deuteronomy 4, verse 5 and 6. It says, See, I have taught you statutes and judgments just as the Lord my God commanded me that you should do thus in the land where you are entering to possess. So keep and do them, for that is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the people who will hear all these statutes and say, Surely, this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So when Paul said, set your mind on things above, not on things on earth, he's not telling us, Free yourself from the concern of the earth. In fact, we are here because God wants to provide for us. He said, set your mind on the things above because if we focus our attention on the concerns of the Lord, He will use the earth to provide for the things we need and what? In abundance. Should we only be concerned about our needs? Do you know that God wants to bless you more than your needs because yun ang promise eh abundant life yung mga tao ba niya, niya in the past puro lang needs nila ang na-address si Abraham ba needs niya lang ang na-address no he had 361 soldiers if we multiply that by 5 he had an employ uh, employment force of close to 2,000 malaki yun Si David ba, ang pinakain lang ni God sa kanya was more than in, was just enough? No. He had lived in abundance. It is not wrong to desire abundance. Paano tayo makakatulong pag tama lang para sa atin? So God wants us to live in abundance. But by being worried about abundance, we will not become abundant. Ang tanong, ano ang gagawin mo to have abundance? And God said, Seek first my kingdom, which is the earth, part of you, and the earth is part of it, and then his righteousness. Live out his ways, and we will never be in it. Diba sabi niya sa Matthew 6.33, And all these things shall be added to you here on earth. Not in heaven, but here on earth. So I realized when Paul said that, he was teaching us something very practical. Focus on the process and not on the end. But you focus on the process, you will get your end. It's really like being fruitful. Grow a healthy tree, it will automatically bear fruit. So let's simplify our life. God wants you to live in abundance. 
And He wants you to also be concerned about your food, about your clothing, and about your homes. But do not focus your attention on those things. But instead, focus kung ano gagawin natin. Because those things will automatically come. So I hope you will truly enjoy your life here on earth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, maraming salamat for explaining this thing to us today and for simplifying life. Lord, allow us to always seek your kingdom and then let us seek it with your righteousness. Allow us to always focus our attention on your ways or the things above so that you will provide for us for our needs here on earth. Thank you, Lord, for your wisdom. And I pray that we will always remain faithful to you, Lord, so that we can enjoy the life that you want us to enjoy here on earth. We thank you for our day. We pray, Lord, that you bless our fellowship. In Jesus' name, we pray.